Hello! Yeah, okay. Mr. War trying to be like Mrs. Doubtfire. I know. Hey, why do I try to always be like Mrs. Doubtfire? I don't know. Many people say I look like Robin Williams. I don't know. It's just what I hear quite a bit. Hey, what are we doing here? Are we just a comedy show? It is not. My friends, I am strict about this is about math. Yes, let's go ahead and get started with lesson 1.4. We're cruising through chapter 1, and then we're in fourth grade math. Now, the topic, round numbers. Oh, goody, we get to round numbers. Fun, fun, woohoo. And it says the essential question. You know our essential question is basically our purpose. A lot of times, I don't know where you guys are getting your education. I'm in California. Okay, San Diego. And I got to tell you, everything's about, why are we doing this? That's right, where's the purpose? Why, why, why? Well, the why of this particular lesson is so that you guys can learn how to round numbers. That's right, how can you round numbers? Round numbers is handy. I use it every day. So these are important skills that you guys need to have. But first, we must unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. That's right. It says here during May 2008, the Mount Rushmore National Monument in South Dakota welcomed 138,202 visitors. A website reported that about 100,000 people visited the park during that month. Wow. Was the estimate reasonable? All right. Well, the verse it says here it says underline what you are asked to find. And it's a circle of the information you will use. Okay. Okay. Let's take this step by step. Now it says an estimate. Look at it. It's highlighted in yellow. It must be important. It says an estimate tells you about how many. Oh, I, like to I like that a lot. I am going to highlight that. It says about. About how many. Or it even says about how much. Okay. That's key. The word about. It is close to an exact amount. You can round a number to find an estimate. So rounding an estimate, they're kind of similar. They're like buddies. We know each other. That's right, you could call them twins maybe because when you round a number, it's like you're finding the estimate by rounding, okay? You could say, why are you rounding that number? Well, Mr. Wara, it's because I'm trying to find an estimate. And I'd say, hey, good job, buddy, okay? Now, one way is we can use a number line strategy that it's given us here to round a number to the nearest hundred thousand okay find the hundred thousands it is between all right so let's take a look at this so it's actually between one hundred thousand right because if it's asking the hundred thousand the nearest hundred thousand then the next hundred thousand up would be two hundred thousand does that make sense this number is between 100,000 and 200,000 if we look at that very first digit, which is the one. Now it says use a number line to see which 100,000, 138,202 is closest to. So here is our thing here. We have that little hand again. He's pointing something, but he's covering up my 100,000. How rude. <laughs> All right, so here's the 100,000. See, that 150 would be in between 100,000 and 200,000. And look at 138,202 is a little bit, yeah, not even a little bit, probably a lot, you could say, a little bit more on this side, which is closer to the 100,000. So 138,202 is closer to, we would say, 100,000 than 200,000. Now, some of you may be thinking, you know, Mr. Wara, I know how to solve that problem a lot faster. And, you know, there's a, I don't want to call it a trick. It's like we think of the algorithm, the procedure we take without using the number line, right, to determine if the number would be rounded to 100,000 or if the number would be rounded to 200,000. But the reason why we're going through this procedure, you know, like with this cool looking number, number line right here, is because we want you to understand and see a visual like a conceptual understanding. It might make more sense if you see this visually, just so you know. That's what Common Core is all about, is about showing strategies. And sometimes the questions will actually ask you to show your work like this. It'll actually say, draw a number line, okay? So you just have to be ready for that. So anyways, here we go. So 100,000, 
is a reasonable estimate because that was actually our question is it reasonable yes it is it was very reasonable now what number is halfway between 100,000 and 200,000 my goodness it's like right up there right 150,000 super easy how does knowing where the halfway point is help you find which 100,000 okay uh great question okay and explain well i would say knowing where the halfway point is makes it easier for us to see if the number is closer to 100,000 or to the 200,000. Okay, so that's what I would say. I would say that the location of a number relative, and relative just means to where it's located on the line. Things are relative depending where it is. So relative to the halfway point, because the halfway point between zero and 10 would be five. But relative in this case, was it was a larger number. So relative to the number of 138,000, then the halfway point is going to be 150,000. So it's relative based on the large number. I hope that makes sense. Relative to the halfway point, it helps you tell if it is, if it is closer to the lesser or the greater rounding number. Remember, because we're going to either round 100,000 or 200,000. Okay, I hope that made some sense, my friends. Let's move on to the next page. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Hey, there's Mount Rushmore. Yay! Another way, it says. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know they could talk. Yes, I know you're George Washington. You're the first president of the United States. Okay. So these guys apparently can talk. Okay. And now President Lincoln is saying, yeah, I'm on the $5 bill. Yes. Okay. Good for you guys. Oh, my God. Mount Rushmore can talk. Yeah, this is just really freaky. Okay. Anyways, I remember visiting you guys when I was a child because where I'm from, I'm not far from uh, Mount Rushmore. So we were able to see that when I was a little kid. It was pretty cool. Anyway, let's take a look. It says Mount Rushmore is located 5,725 feet above sea level. It's pretty high up. About how high is Mount Rushmore above sea level? To the nearest thousand feet. Now to round a number to the nearest thousand, let's find the thousands it is between. Okay, just like last time. So if we're looking at that thousands place, then we're gonna want to say, okay, it has to be between, right, 5,000. Okay, so we'll write 5,000 here. And then of course, 6,000, because we're just looking at the thousands place. Okay, now it says look at the digit in the place value position to the right. Aha. Uh -huh. This is what I bet some of you guys have learned to do, right? We look at that seven. Now it says, think. The digit in the hundreds place is seven. So 5,725 is closer to 6,000 than 5,000. Why is that true? Because the middle one, I don't know if they're going to have us do, the middle one, the number that's actually in between our little halfway point would be 5,500, right? That's in between. Okay, this is greater than our 5,000 over here that we had written up there, but yet it's less than our 6,000 over here. And this is our halfway point. As you can see, our seven goes beyond that halfway point. It does. So that's why. So Mount Rushmore is about, we can say now that it's up, it's about 6,000 feet above sea level. Okay, cool. Number three. Number three says, what number is halfway? Oh, there's that little thing guy again. Oh, you just keep coming everywhere, don't you? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to color you in. Make a really cool color. There you go. It's like you were never there. <laughs> what number is halfway between 70,000 and 80,000? Okay, I think I can figure that out. Let me see here. 70,000. Okay, we have a seven here. We have an eight there. Ooh, how about the next place value would be a five? So maybe 75,000. Yeah, that would be the five. So you keep the end up the five is in between all those numbers. When we have 10 and we have, well, in this case, zero, right? That five ends up in the middle. So that happens to be the key number when we think of halfway points. What is 75,000 rounded to the nearest 10,000? Explain. Here's a tough one because look at, the five here is right in the middle. And it says, what's this rounded to the nearest 10,000? Well, the 10,000th place is the seven. So it's exactly in the middle, is it not? 75,000 is exactly in the middle. So what do we do in this case? 
Well, let me tell you what we do in these cases. Whenever we find a number that's exactly in the middle, we always round up. So let's go ahead and write that down. So here, that's what we do. So when we have a number that can be located exactly in the middle or can be found exactly in the middle of, of two rounding numbers, then we simply round up to the greater number. So in this case, 75,000 would be rounded to 80,000. So that's what we would round that one to, 80,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Okay, now we're on the very bottom part. Oh my goodness, we're getting near the end here. It says, try this. Round to the place value of the underlined digit. Okay, so now that we've had some strategies with using a number line, right, comparing digits, we now they're going to kind of put us on our own. We can still use a strategy if we want. So let's see here. It says the underlined digit is 6, so on that previous previous example there it said that we could just kind of look at the very next digit which is a four nice arrow okay and the four is well it's not middle the five is our right our middle so if we have a four then that means it's going to be on that side which of course that means it's going to be closer to the 60,000 as opposed to the 70,000 because the six in the 10,000th place lets us know that's what we're rounding so we're going to choose 60,000 or, I'm sorry, or, or 70,000. And in this case, it's going to stay at 60,000 would be the rounded number. Okay, I hope that made some sense. Now over here, we have eight. Okay, we're going to 100,000. So this is either going to be 800,000 or 900,000 because we're only interested in that 100,000th place. Now look where that, we have a five. It's, it's just like before, that number is right in the middle. What do we do? We round up. So we say that 850,000, even though it's exactly in the middle of those two noun, those two numbers, it's right there in the middle, we round up to 900,000. See here we have the underlying digit of one, um, which is in a thousands place. So we're actually either going to choose that this is going to be 300, okay, I'm sorry, ignore, okay, let's try this, 301,000 or 302,000. Okay, because we're rounding something in between now. And that five lets us know that, ah, we're going to round up because it's in the middle. Now we have the eight and the seven, even going to make it closer to 302,000. So we round that number to 302,000. Now here we have a zero in the thousands place. So it might be kind of confusing, but it's still, it's just, are we going to go from 10,000 or are we going to round up to 11,000? Because that's the place we're interested in the thousands place. Now in this case, because we already have we already have a one there, but we have an eight over here. So the eight lets us know that we're gonna round up. So it's actually gonna go to eleven thousand. Now I'm just gonna show you again, conceptually it's important that you understand how we looked at these numbers. However, I know that many of you have probably learned these little tricks along the way. Who knows? Maybe you learned this in third grade when it comes to rounding. But so we say four or less, okay? four or less, you guys probably know this, let it rest. And what that just means is that we're not going to change the digit. Let it rest, we're referring to the digit. Just leave the digit alone. How we have an example of that, this was a perfect example here. The six, the digit didn't go up, okay? It didn't go up to seven, we left it at six. That's what they mean by let it rest. Does this make sense to you? Otherwise, we say five, or more, which that's going to go all the way up to nine, five or more, up the score. And I don't know, this is just, ooh, I'm learning how to spell. E, there we go. You didn't see anything, eh? You didn't see anything. Okay, so we up the score. That's what five, so five or more, we up the score, which that's what we did in all of these. Look at the eight changed to a nine. The zero here turned to a one. And over here, the one turn to a two. And that's what I mean by that. This was the only one where it let it rest. Okay. And mostly because why? That was a four. Four or less, let it rest. Then we come here. Look at five or more up the score. That's why we moved it up to a nine. This one is a one, but here was the five we were looking at. Five or more up the score. The same thing here. Eight. Five or more up the score. Okay, little trick. I you out. Okay, I know. I hear the music. Okay. Yeah. Bring on that bumper music. Mr. Wara, why do you put in bumper music? I like it. Hey, that's a good enough reason. Now, my friends, 
I hope you found this video helpful. Please, questions, comments, I'm always open to even some constructive criticism. Is there something I can do to make the videos better? Blah, 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 blah. Is there something that I can do to make the math videos better? Please let me know, my friends. Okay, now, live long and prosper.